to some of these clips from uh, from Michael and what he said. Now, the name I should say this: the name of his the name of his webinar was a little bit misleading. To be honest with you, I thought this was going to be a let's dump on the Gentiles webinar. It wasn't. the The name of the webinar was "One God: The Poisonous Fruit of Hebrew Roots." Then, and that's the series name. And then the the actual name of this specific webinar was "The Hoax of Gentiles Keeping Torah." So right there, it makes you it makes it sound like he's going to bash Gentiles and like he's going to bash uh, one Torah believers. Uh, actually, what he did was bash Torah. That's what he did. Mm. He bashed Torah. And uh, I think that uh, it will become abundantly clear why I say that. I'm sure if uh, Michael is listening, he's saying, no, I didn't do that. Uh, but I would uh, disagree with that. And I'm going to show you why. Here's a uh, first clip. This is from the webinar last night. Oops. What am I doing here? Here we go. Somebody, somebody asked, do you actually believe that Torah is basically a cultural expression of Jewishness. That was Andrew's question. No, I wouldn't say that because, you know, first of all, when you ask, whenever you use the word Torah, okay, what are we talking about? Now, I was talking about the dietary laws. Uh, you know, it's, it is a cultural expression of Jewishness. Um, but it's more than that. It's also a healthy way of eating. Wearing tzitzit is a cultural expression of Jewishness. So is uh, keeping the feasts in the Shabbat. That's not all that it is, but that is a big part of what it is, which is why I do it. I know I don't have to, but it's who I am. Okay, now I should say this. Throughout the, throughout the webinar, uh, Michael uh, continues to say that he was not raised Christian. He was raised in a Jewish home. And so that the, the Christian doctrine and these things, he wasn't, you know, it wasn't in, ingrained in his mind, uh, Christian doctrine. What's interesting to me, well, uh, let's keep going. So um, right there, Michael in this webinar tells us that uh, he doesn't have to keep Torah. No one has to keep Torah. So I'm not sure how this is a Jew, how this is a messianic Jewish uh, uh, belief. To me, it sounds very well. Except that he, because of the my limited understanding of the group that he uh, is on the steering committee for, is is that Torah is a cultural expression for Jews. What part it, of Torah is a cultural well, expression? It's not a commandment anymore. In what? other words, it's not that God commanded. And then there are commandments, and there are people who are commanded. It's rather that it's like, oh, it's like touchy feet. It's like cultural expression <laughs> that's optional for Jews. It's like, oh, you know, it's just a, it's like, it's like, do you like, how do you like your coffee or, you know, how do you like your tea? It's a, just a preferential if you prefer it or not, kind of thing. So, so he he so said, it's about what I want. Yeah, exactly. It's about what it's about what I what appeals to me, not yeah. about that there's a creator of heaven and earth who actually ordained uh, a, a specific law. Well, what I see happening here is now uh, Michael has now basically turned on Torah. I see this as an assault on Torah. Mm -hmm. He has he, now he's he's not dumping on Gentiles for keeping the Torah yet. He's dumping on the Torah. And as to me, someone who claims to be a messianic rabbi and then dumps on Torah and says, no, we don't have to keep it. Well, then why then just call yourself what you are. You're a Christian pastor, right? I mean, maybe that's harsh. Maybe I'm not seeing the, the, uh, the fine line here, but I, I don't understand how that's not Christianity. He's teaching, he's teaching a standard Christian doctrine. And for our Christian brothers and sisters out there uh, who are listening to this, okay, I'm not trying to dump on Christian pastors either. All I'm saying is, is that, it, to me, I don't see a distinction here. Now we're blurring the lines between what Messianic is and what uh, uh, Christianity is. If you're going to be a Christian pastor, that's fine. Be a Christian pastor and teach, you know, teach Christian doctrine. That's fine. But what I'm saying is, is that for me, I would see messi a Messianic faith as not dumping on the Torah. In fact, I would kind of think that that goes against Messianic faith to dump on the Torah. Okay, so, uh, you know, here's the one thing that I took away from uh, Michael's webinar.
Okay. I took the, this is the one thing I took away from, from and, and Adam said this to me as well, um, is that I think that Michael does not have a firm grasp of the difference between justification and sanctification. I think that he does not understand the distinction. He talks about keeping Torah as if we are saying it's a justification issue. Torah is not a justification right. issue. It never has been. It never will be. There is nothing that we can do to, to gain our salvation. And it could be, to give Michael the benefit of the doubt, that he has encountered people that have also made that mistake but are on the other side yes. of the argument. In other words, and so it's not that his comments are uh, you know, th- th- absolutely ringing empty. There might be people out there who actually think that they are earning favor with God by doing the commandments. But that, that doesn't even mean you have to be a follower of Messiah to make that error. You might, you might be, you know, in Orthodox Judaism that's and, right. and have that belief. So that's not even a, the, anyway. But. So anyway, so, so I, I just want to leave on this. Now I want to leave this topic on this note. You know, we do not keep Torah for justification purposes. God justifies us first. He does that through the blood of the Messiah. He does that through through uh, the sacrifice that was given in his son. That is how we are justified. Done. That There's nothing else to it. And as most of our regular listeners know, Rob and I are Calvinists. So it's, it has nothing to do with us, in our, in our opinion, it has nothing to do with us choosing that even. We, uh, you know, we have choice, but... <laughs> Okay, let's not get into Calvinism. Anyway, the point is, is that uh, what Torah has to, 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 to do with all of it is sanctification. God justifies us, and then he sanctifies us. He sets us apart unto himself. How does he do that? He has always done that through Torah. Whether you're a Christian or not, a, a, a Jew or not, uh, or a, even a Christian today, Christians are set apart by Torah. They might not realize that it's Torah, but that's how they're, that is how they're sanctified. They're sanctified by loving the Lord their God with all their heart, mind, and strength. That's Torah. They're sanctified by loving their neighbors their, themselves. That's Torah. They're sanctified by not lying, by not gossiping, all these kind of things. These, these are all Torah commandments. They are sanctified by Torah. That's how God's elect have always been sanctified. And according to the word of God, I'm quite sure that that's how they will be sanctified in the world to come as well. At least in the millennial reign, maybe not in the world to come. That can be debated. 